Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide. And in today's video, we have another edition of questions and answers. You ask the questions, I answer them however well I can. So let's start. So we start with the Daylight DC1 because I'm starting to get a lot of questions. What would you say about the new Daylight computer e-paper tablet? Have you seen the Daylight? Looks like it's also transflective LCD. Maybe more expensive than other 10 inch devices, but in exchange you get 60 FPS and I seem to be getting them daily. So I have reached out to the Daylight Computers Company, as they are called, um, but I just wrote like a, a, a 24 hours ago, so I haven't received a reply yet, but hopefully I will. And if I do, I will try my best to actually secure a uh, review loan device unit so that I can bring you the independent, in-depth look of the Daylight DC1. And I'll keep you updated if that is something that's gonna you know, develop and if I get some responses or not. Hopefully, yes. And if so, then you will be able to see it on my deep guide. Not related to the software update, but have you ever replaced the screen protector on your Note Air 3C? Just got my a few days ago but I already have a few scratches on it. Um, no, simply because uh, you can't replace a the, the layer that is on top of the screen because that is laminated on top of the screen so that's part of the screen. Um, but uh, I would invite you to use a dry microfiber cloth and simply wipe the area of the screen that you have that you believe are scratches because more likely than not, it could be scratches if there's damage to it. But from normal use of just writing and stuff, what actually happens is because it does have that rough paper-like surface on top. And when you're writing with a soft nib, the soft nib is being effectively sanded down. And a microscopic dark images, uh, dark particles of that soft felt on the material fill in the pores of the screen. And they can leave marks that some people can interpret as scratch marks or something. And that's basic maintenance of your screen. So just use a dry microfiber cloth. Really important that it's dry and microfiber is the best one to pick all of that stuff from the pores and just give it a good normal uh, brush sideways and vertical. Don't press, don't press too hard. Just let the brush do its work. And if those are not scratch marks or damage, and if they're just marks from your pen, you will see them disappear. This is in regards to the paper-like screen protector that I've applied on my books tab X. And it says, how is the writing feel on this film comparing to OM Note Air 3 screen? Any latency difference? Uh, first of all, uh, screen protector cannot uh, affect a latency in any way, shape or form. So no, there are no latency differences, um, whether or not you use a screen protector or not. As for the feel itself, it is rougher than the Note Air 3C, so it feels a bit more rougher. It will eat those soft nibs uh, faster. And the reflectivity is worse than it is on the Note Air 3C. Honestly, if I could just find the exact same type of a screen protector that they apply on the, or the surface that they have applied on the Note Air 3C, I would be a very, very happy puppy. So that was the only alternative, or the best alternative that I could find so far for the Bookstab X. And so far it's still on it, and I do tend to use it more and more because of that writing feel. So. Yeah. I've been using my Note Air 3 a bunch lately for note taking. Does anyone know if there is a way to have two notepads open at once side by side? Unfortunately, no, you can't have two uh, instances of the same app opened on books uh, devices. And I think that's maybe an Android thing because I've never tried on any other Android device, but I don't think that you can have two instances of the same app running in parallel. Um, so no, you can't have two notebooks, but what you can do, depending on what your uh, work is, uh, what you can do is you can export one of your notebooks as a PDF, open that in the NeoReader and then open the other notebook here. Then you can flip around and do that stuff. Obviously, the one that's exported as a PDF won't have notebook functionalities, but if it's something that you're using just for referencing, well, then that kind of stuff can actually work. 
Thanks for your nice review, as usual. Thank you. Uh, how would you roughly compare the purely reflective brightness with other reflective screens that you tested? Do you think that the same reflectivity hinders the capacity to retain the ambient light? Um, um, in my personal experience and subjective impression, so this is a subjective impression, I could not really see any noticeable difference. So the impression was not that this is brighter or less bright than a reflective LCD. This was, the impression was, hey, this is exactly the same like a reflective LCD because it is, because it is reflecting everything. And from uh, the data sheet points that SVD shared with me, at least from what I can see, I think that the difference in uh, reflectivity intensity, that the light that's being reflected between a R LCD and T LCD, is four or five percent. So let's say that it's even five percent less brightness uh, in the case of transflective uh, LCD panels. Um, that's not really something that you're going to notice that much. Much bigger problem is always going to be that reflectivity, uh, not uh, the reflectivity of the surface of the screen in front, not behind the LCD because those reflections are sharp and strong and they will combat the intensity that's reflected back. That being said, there is a four to five percent difference and maybe if you put them side by side and they're the same size and everything, we would be able to notice something. But first of all, I don't know, or purely reflective LCD panel of that size and um, I don't have them at hand to be able to compare them back to back. But subjective impressions of normally using it in normal conditions outside, inside and stuff, they seem pretty much the same. This is regarding Remarkable, update 311. I'm concerned that they're trying to become something they're not in an attempt to compete with other tablets. But for me, the fact that I uh, that all I could do was use it as a paper notebook replacement was what made it my choice. I don't want fancy things like external keyboards. I want to be able to use the eraser button on my Lamy, and I want uh, to be able to add my own templates without needing to go into the device programming every time there's an update. Simplicity was always what what was uh, attractive about the Remarkable 2 and I agree wholeheartedly. I think that that is the whole point and that, that, that is the complete value of Remarkable as a platform because remember seven years ago it was called Remarkable Paper Tablet, right? Tablet was just the format of it but it is a paper tablet. Yeah, I fully agree that that's what made it stand out, that's what made it uh, really, really good. Uh, unfortunately, they are wearing off more and more from the paper aspect of the tablet and they're starting to add things that, yeah, are, are not focused in my own opinion at least. And I wish that we could see them actually going back to perfecting what the Remarkable as a platform was and is supposed to have been about, which is a remarkable paper tablet. There are many areas that can be improved without adding compli complications or distractions or anything. No, 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 don't make it fancy or anything. No, just make things better. And there are definitely room, uh, a lot of room for improvement on that, but they're not focusing on that, they're focusing on other things. And uh, that's kind of um, sad to see. Regarding the Supernote A5X2, waiting for the A4. Well, I think that that wait is going to be quite a long one since the A5X2 has been delayed to Q3 and it probably means that it's going to hit the market in Q4 or that people are going to start receiving it in Q4 because it's late in the game and Q3 is almost here. So yeah, I think that the wait for the A4 might be a long one. This one is regarding the books update. Uh, glad to see the mouse sensitivity options have finally reached the Note Air 3C. Yes, you and me both, because it used to be that the tab line of devices with the tab OS had the extra functionalities for hardware keyboards, shortcuts, and uh, especially the mouse sensitivity, the pointer size, and all that kind of stuff. But now we finally have them on the non-tab devices, and that is a really, really cool thing to see, especially for those of us who are using the for example, Note Air 3C as a multitasking type of a device that covers a whole range of 
functionalities and often I really really often I use it with a keyboard but sometimes I will use it with a trackpad as well and it is something that I missed but now we actually have that functionality and that's a good thing to see. This is also in regards to the books update 351. Have you noticed that the ghosting is more relevant, I guess prevalent, uh, after this update? I use the monochrome version of this device, not the C with BSR. Uh, and I need to refresh manually more often now, especially in the default notes app. Um, no, I have not noticed that. First of all, the, the monochrome version is not with BSR, it's only 3C is with a BSR, the regular tree doesn't have BSR. Um, so have you checked that maybe the, the refresh mode has not changed your, uh, that the update has not changed your default refresh modes for the apps? Because maybe you are running in a different refresh mode that's actually uh, causing more ghosting. So that's something that I would invite you to actually double check and see if that's the case or not. But um, no, I don't use the Note Air 3, so I don't have it at hand to do double check that, nor do I have everyday experience to uh, have the ability to compare what it was before and what it is now. All I can speak to is how it is on the Note Air 3C and the Tab X, those I do use um, regularly. And there I did not see any, any ghosting differences uh, prior or after the update. This is a question for generally books devices. Is there a way to update the Note Air from Android 10 to Android 12? And the answer to that is unfortunately no. And the um, uh, reason behind why it's not possible to, uh, uh, to upgrade to a newer Android is that the system boards or system on chip um, entire boards that they're using here in these devices, they have a uh, license attached with them, which allows them, uh, I think, a three-year upgrade term. And these are very, very old, older type of chips, which are already at the end of their licensing upgrade uh, agreement. So the things that you get, like Android 10, that's its cap it's legally not allowed to be updated to anything more. And the reason behind that is that uh, Android uh, developer or development team for the Android can backtrack and offer backwards compatibility only so far. Uh, they can't really make sure that the Android 14 is capable of you know, handling and supporting hardware from 10, 12 years ago. So, that's the whole conundrum here, but uh, and, a, and a long answer and explanation of what the reasons are behind all of these things. But um, this could easily be um, yeah, remedied if books and all of these producers would actually decide to use current SOCs as opposed to already obsolete SOCs that have reached end of life uh, support system that uh, support uh, uh, licensing that they have attached to them. There is a comment now, again, again about the books update 3.5.1. Terrible update! Now you can no longer voice record while stitching, switching between apps for references and note taking. Completely useless device now. Do not buy. Um, and the uh, commenter goes on to state things that some are true, but some are actually not true. So um, yes, it is not possible to multitask while doing a recording in a uh, notebook itself. So what we're talking about here is that if you go into insert and you do the record thing here, so now it automatically is starting to record. As you can see, the counter is doing its thing. Um, now, the poster actually says that you're no longer able to swip, swipe pages or do anything like that. So let me just kind of demonstrate right here. So I can write normally, right? The counter is working. I can flip a page and the recorder is still there. I can flip a page here, flip a page there, flip a page here, blah, 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 blah. I can insert a new page. The recorder is still working. So uh, no, that part of the rant is incorrect, as you can demonstrably see here. And if I press stop here, and, and if we now, I guess, long press and move it here, and if I tap on it, here. so now it automatically is starting to record, as you can see, the counter is doing it. Um, now, the poster actually says that you're no longer able to swipe pages or do anything like that. So, so 
and it records and you can see that the length is 41 seconds so everything was recorded now if you do start the recording in the notes app and you do switch away from the note app to minimize it into the background this recording will stop granted and in complete you know complete transparency i have never tested that before so i don't know if this has ever worked like that before but if it has and if this is something that they have changed then this is something that absolutely they will have to fix and uh, yeah absolutely fix or maybe at least add an option in the notes to actually check that however um until that happens or if that ever happens uh, you do have a workaround that you can use and if you go to uh, your t -t 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 recorder app let's see reflection there we go if you go to the recorder app and if I start the recorder app and let's start a new recording so this is a new recording that's now happening and because this is a general app that is equipped to record and have its activity continue while it's minimized that means that I can go now into my notes app I can continue writing I can go into I don't know I can go into edge and double check things there Okay, so it's doing its thing, blah, blah, blah. I can, yeah, I can do, go back into my notes. I can reference, I can normally operate, right? And when I'm done, I can just simply go back to the recorder. It's still recording, so we have 38 seconds. I'm going to press stop. It says where it has recorded it, right? And now what you can do is you can go back to your notes, right? And let's go insert. And here in the insert, you can choose to choo, 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 where is the attachments so as an attachment you go to storage voice recorders and recordings and here is my last recording that i've done i tap on ok and here is the recorder recording that has been added to the notebook similar very similar fashion like uh, the default recording here and the best thing of all is that when i tap on it and then it works pretty much in the same way that you had before and you ensure that it's uh, yeah, system-wide so you can multitask as much as you want. I saw on Reddit yesterday that books page C will be released in June. I'm excited to see what they offer for that. I can tell you that I am excited about that as well and I am delighted to tell you that you will be able to see it on my deep guide. That's all I can say at the moment, but yes that's something that we both are looking forward to all right that's it from me for this edition of q a i hope that you liked it and that you found some of the information here uh, useful or informative or entertaining um, if you did please like and subscribe to the channel like the video um, and also ding the notification bell in the description below to get notified when new videos come out on my deep guide and also post your questions for the next edition of q a in the uh, video below here because that is the easiest way for me to find the um, yeah the questions that are posed that are probably going to be covered in the next edition of q a thank you so much for watching stay safe stay healthy and see you in the next video Bye.